Thank you. So good afternoon to everyone. Uh, in the next few minutes, I would like to talk to you about OSN's navigation capabilities and challenges through the example of a comparative uh, study on OSM key tags for navigation. So I came from NNG. I worked there as a software tester, and uh, we are a global company who is designing and shipping uh, navigation solutions, both uh, connected and offline solutions from pocket to cloud to uh, global partners. And we do this always uh, with fresh map contents, uh, with global and regional providers as well. So we work together with most of the global brands. Uh, and uh, as we hear, for them, hear from them, they are not only looking for uh, quality solutions, but they would also like to have cost-effective solutions uh, with their maps that they have in their uh, cars and vehicles. And that's exactly the reason why I'm here today, because uh, OSM has the maturity for turn by turn navigation. And that, that's the reason why we added NNG maps into our portfolio, which is an OSM uh, core uh, product. So we have OSM for all the navigation layers, and we only use third party additional contents where it is necessary because of the spatial distribution and data quality of OSM. Um, so uh, we have years of experience with uh, OSM, mostly internal experiences so far. But we know that we are not the only uh, company who's dealing with uh, OSM navigation. Uh, so we went out uh, for a field test uh, where we compared uh, two navigation solutions, one embedded solution, which was our solution, NNG Maps. And we also took a device with OSM and uh, the popular uh, Android-based navigation software. We went around in Budapest, the capital of Hungary, where we tested all the key functionalities which is uh, required for uh, a good navigation. And why we did it? So first, we wanted to identify whether we really use the common key tag uh, set of uh, OSM, uh, which is needed for navigation. We wanted to um, understand uh, whether we have the same challenges with the OSM data. And this way, we wanted to identify some areas where we could uh, improve. And that's what I would like to present to you uh, today. And to present this, uh, I will go through in an order which follows the actual user expectations. So let's say, for example, I'm in point, point A, I would like to get to point B. First, I would like to select my destination. Then I would expect the navigation to plan a route which is safe, secure, and effective. When the navigation is running, uh, I should have solutions which help my navigation experience with every possible solution to guidance instructions. And of course, all this uh, should be done uh, in a realistic, but also fast rendering um, uh, environment, uh, which should be done with visualization. This is an in interesting topic as well, and we have uh, OSM layers for this, but I won't talk about it today because uh, it doesn't um, affect the routing itself. Uh, and also because of time constraints, it's better to be kept out now. So let's start first with a destination entry. And the first uh, section, how we can do it is searching for an address. Either we can do it with a structured solution. So in a hierarchical order by city, street, and uh, house number level, we can do it. Or we can write everything into one box. Uh, for either solutions, we have the necessary uh, OSM tags in uh, uh, the database, and it can be filled out. Well, the level how it is filled out, it, it depends a lot, of course, um, where we check it. So, for example, here, as I found in the US, uh, the coverage, even with house members, is very good. But, for example, in Europe, as we tested, there are some areas where there is uh, a room for improvement. And uh, one thing with, which I would like to highlight here is the Latin transcriptions. So here in the US, it's not a big question, I guess, uh, because you don't have very special alphabets. But for example, as we experienced it uh, in some European uh, countries, for example, in Serbia, there you really need a good Latin transcription. So not only the Serbian language uh, should be uh, mapped for street names and uh, city names, but also English, French, or any other type of language should be, be there, because otherwise it could be a challenge for visitors to navigate that way. Another way how we can select our destination uh, is selecting the POI, a point of interest either searching a specific place or trying to find a good restaurant or a fuel station along our route. For this, we also have all the OSM awesome maps, 
And here, what uh, I would like to really uh, highlight is the importance of names. So for example, here uh, on the right, uh, with this OSN and uh, screenshot, you can see how much difference it makes when you have proper name uh, for the parking space uh, POS, and not just parking, 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 or fuel station, fuel station without the proper name is listed. So here, uh, what we really recommend for um, uh, fellow mappers, so if you find uh, nameless POIs, it's a very good way to improve the data set because uh, it's better usable uh, that way in uh, the navigation softwares. And of course, all the other uh, additional information about opening hours for EV stations, uh, all, all the potential information is, is welcome and can be well used for navigation with either solutions. Let's start now route planning. And of course, here, the backbone is the road classification of the route network. Uh, for this, of course, you, we can use uh, the highway tag. And what is uh, quite important here, as we experience, is uh, if we do the first surveying, of course, the unclassified category is good. But after that, uh, the rear road classification should be added because uh, map compilation process um, doesn't really like uh, this kind of uh, unclassified uh, category with either solutions. And the other thing that we experienced uh, really in the field is that we really need the information on the surface. So um, adding the, the proper uh, value with asphalt is also important, but at least indicating that something is uh, paved or unpaved, that's really important for navigations because otherwise you might run into a situation during navigation which can be quite uh, sudden. So uh, it's, it's better to map it uh, properly. Uh, about segment usage, usage uh, restrictions, we can say that, for example, the one-way um, um, one way tags are very well mapped, as we <coughs> experienced. Mm -hmm. But if we talk about uh, vehicle-based restrictions, um, here you could see that if we have that information, it can be properly uh, marked by the navigation software. So mm -hmm. there is a pop-up window or something like that, which uh, allows you to change private roads or non-private roads. Um, and, and here, yeah, I can just also say that if you have this tag, you will have the proper routing, but if not, you might end up in an industrial area where you didn't really like to go uh, originally. Uh, for manual restrictions, uh, here um, it could be good to start a discussion on the uh, current mapping guideline because it says that if something is not signed by a table, then it shouldn't be mapped. But here I would like to bring you an example. Let's see this situation. Uh, here at this uh, junction, uh, U-turn is not prohibited by, by table signage, uh, but and, and this way uh, both of the navigation uh, could plan this route, but otherwise it's a dangerous situation. So that's our experience with other maps as well. So if something is not table assigned, but logically a manual restriction is needed there, it's better to include it. So it's something that uh, might be reconsidered uh, with the mapping guideline here. Another thing is uh, speed limits. Uh, so uh, all of our drivers uh, said that they really like uh, seeing the actual legal speed limit and not only seeing the actual uh, uh, speed of the car that the, they are taking. So for this, to map this properly, we can use either uh, the explicit values that we see by tables, but if this information is not available or we are not sure about that, even the implicit values, so simply using the country rules that for primary roads we have, I don't know, uh, 60 miles or something like this, is still better than nothing. So that's our experience with that, and that's how we saw with both navigations. Uh, in terms of lane information, of course, it's the best if we have it for all uh, the, the road network, the complete road network, but where they can be really important are complex junctions, because if we fill up this uh, um, data properly about the textual information, uh, the, the lanes, uh, the road shields that are available, as you can see, um, uh, it's something that would have uh, the guidance uh, of the drivers uh, very well. And now I turn to the last section of my presentation about the real guidance instructions, which are not uh, indispensable for navigation, but uh, they help uh, the driving experience a lot. First of all, uh, here are the traffic signs. I think there will be a presentation about that tomorrow, as I saw in the program. Uh, so OSM has the capabilities and the tech set uh, for that, but our experience was that uh, this possibility 
is not yet uh, used in its uh, full functionality. So it's a good uh, mapping uh, purpose uh, for those who are interested in that. And this way, as you can see, if this is filled up, uh, then it's really useful for the users because uh, they receive information about warnings, regulations, about the table signage next to the routes uh, in a form of a small pop-up. So it's a really useful feature and uh, there's definitely a good room for improvement there. I don't know how is the situation here in the States, uh, but uh, in, in Europe, most of the users really like uh, having the speed camera information in their navigation uh, because they sometimes they like going faster a bit uh, than, than it is uh, allowed by their regulations and they have to know where they have to slow down a bit. Uh, for this, we have the OSM capabilities as well. Uh, and what we experienced is that the locations are very well mapped. So we could find almost all the uh, speed cameras uh, that were there in reality. But something which is needed for the proper functionality of these are the max speed information and the direction where you have to really measure the speed. So uh, this was not mapped for many of the speed cameras. So it's also a good uh, way um, to improve the data here with mapping challenges and, and uh, other initiatives. And finally, I would like to bring in a feature which is currently not implemented in OSN as far as I know, uh, road announcements. So for example, let's say that we have this information here about the destination, uh, Swansea. And now I'm saying it with my funny Hanglish uh, accent because I'm from Hungary originally. But if it is, uh, if it could be mapped uh, with, for example, the IPA translation, where you could uh, tell to the navigation engine as well how to say it properly, then uh, this information could be used later in the future by uh, both navigation or either navigation uh, engines. So to summarize, I can just confirm again, uh, validating two uh, navigation solutions that OSM is ready for turbine to navigation. And that's why we offer, for example, NNG maps to our customers as well with growing confidentiality. Uh, and our company would like to take uh, a part in improving uh, OSM as well. So during map compilation and testing, if you find any kind of error or problem with the OSM data, we will feed it back directly. But we would also like to uh, take part in collaboration with the OSM communities, local communities in either countries. And as I presented some of the uh, layers and their importance, how it can be uh, improved, uh, we might even make some um, uh, mapping challenges, challenges as well on Netflix or, or on other um, um, interfaces. And just as I mentioned, there are uh, two features where uh, maybe a community discussion should be uh, carried out in the future. One is about the maneuver mapping guideline, as I mentioned, and the other is about uh, phonemius, whether it should be included uh, in the maps in the future or not. So, uh, there is a room for improvement, but even in this form, as we experienced, OSM is a very good option for navigation, and this way we can recommend it uh, to anyone who would like to use it as a solution. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.